almost everyone measures the price of Bitcoin in US dollar or other fiat currencies. But here we're going to look at potentially a more accurate way to understand the real value of BTC. Today we're going to be looking at potentially a more accurate understanding of the BTC valuation and where better to start than the CPI versus BTC chart we have here on BitcoinMagazinePro.com. So if you weren't already aware, CPI is the consumer price index as well as the CPI. We also have the producer price index and the CPI excluding food and energy. What this is measuring is pretty much the cost of a average basket of goods or services for the average household. We can come down here and see a little bit of a deeper explanation of this. But really, if we just exclude the PPI and CPI, excluding food and energy, we can see over the past few years, pretty much since 2020, this has absolutely skyrocketed. If we add on something like a trend line, which would look something like this potentially, we can see we've diverged massively from what might be considered a normal rate of inflation. So we're actually seeing the purchasing power of not just fiat currencies like the US dollar and any other global fiat currency, but also Bitcoin's purchasing power potentially be diminished as well. If I just remove these here, what we can do is actually see that at the lowest point just prior to this massive run up, CPI was at around 255.85 and we're now at around 313.53. So this has increased pretty substantially, especially considering the trend over the previous years before 2020. But one way we can interpret this data is to look at, say, the current price of Bitcoin, which, as I film this, is somewhere around $57,000, $58,000. And when Bitcoin first reached that price, so around here, let's say February 21st, 2021, we can see at that, that point, the CPI was at 262.52. And as we said, now it's sitting at 313.53. This is about a 19.4% increase in CPI. And as Bitcoin's prices remained the same, well, obviously it hasn't. It's had some ups and downs at that point. But right now, looking at price compared to now to three and a half years ago, as they're the same price, Bitcoin's purchasing power has actually decreased about 19.5%. Now, this obviously isn't ideal. And one thing we can do is maybe check the purchasing power of BTC in today's US dollar terms compared to previous US dollar terms. So if we just look at something like the Bitcoin all-time high, which is around $73,000, $74,000 in March 2024, and again, take a look at CPI at that lowest point in 2020. We can actually say that if CPI was the same today as it was in that moment in time, then the Bitcoin all-time high would have been probably about $90,000, $90,280. So the purchasing power has definitely been impacted by this massive increase in inflation. One thing we also need to consider is like we said, this isn't just impacting BTC, but it may be impacting BTC more than other assets. What I can do is go to trading view here. And this chart is actually BTC USD, so the standard Bitcoin price. But rather than measuring in US dollar terms, we're measuring it against the S&P 500. And what we can see is over the past few years, this chart, while it does look similar to the BTC price action, does have quite a few notable differences. For example, the double peak cycle we had in 2021 into 2022 actually has diminishing returns. Whereas if you look on the standard BTC chart, the peaks are actually slightly higher. And then our current all-time high was lower than both of these previous peaks, which means even though BTC is outpacing the S&P 500 this cycle in terms of just raw percentage gains, of the past two cycles, BTC's purchasing power has actually decreased slightly in terms of its peak point compared to the S&P 500, which isn't necessarily an immediately bearish element, but it is something we just need to consider that as Bitcoin is a potentially more speculative and risk on asset, as inflation is increasing, there's potentially less demand for a more speculative asset that can potentially decrease 50, 60, 70, 80%. So one thing we also need to consider is while inflation is obviously impacting the price of goods, we are seeing a massive increase in the supply of these fiat currencies. So here is the US M1 money versus BTC chart. And if you hadn't already noticed, it increased somewhat noticeably at about the same time in 2020, increasing from around 3,980 at that point to 16,246 units. Now the M1 money supply is measuring all notes and coins and equivalents in circulation in the US economy. And obviously we can see as this increased massively, this probably did have a little bit of a positive impact on the BTC price action. As the purchasing power of standard US dollars decreased, the BTC price increased as people looked to fight inflation. But one thing we can do is utilizing the Bitcoin Magazine Pro API is actually take this raw data and do something similar to what we did with the BTC S&P 500 chart. 
So what I've done here is just take the Bitcoin price and the US M1 money supply, and then just divided that. So again, we can see the Bitcoin price in relation to the circulating supply of US dollars. And what we can see here is really surprising. We actually think that the previous cycle we had in 2021 had lower peaks than in 2017. Again, diminishing returns on both of those double peaks. And our current all time high is actually only slightly higher than that peak we had in 2017, which maybe indicates that Bitcoin, while obviously has had great US dollar terms, maybe a huge amount of Bitcoin's upside was due to the fact we had a massive increase in liquidity. So is this something that we need to be bearish about? Do we think that Bitcoin's upside potential is limited? Well, one thing we need to acknowledge is Bitcoin is very much driven by these liquidity cycles. And the good news for us is we're actually seeing a little bit of an upsurge in this global liquidity. We're starting to see the sentiment shift from a more bearish, hawkish, approach from governments and central banks around the world. So now looking at conditions that are much more favorable for the Bitcoin price action. Here we're looking at global M2 versus BTC year on year. And we can see that this has started to increase very noticeably compared to the past few years. As this has an almost one-to-one -one correlation with the BTC price action, well, pretty much causation with the BTC price action. We can see that as this decreased rapidly, we did see a BTC bear cycle. And as this initially increased, this actually led to the BTC most recent all-time high being set. But we've actually had quite a stagnant period in this metric over the past few months. So to now see this continue to climb maybe indicates that BTC is lagging behind a little bit. Also, if you haven't already, please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to ensure you're receiving all of our content as soon as it's released. And make sure to check out all the resources we've discussed today, as well as the many more that are all available on BitcoinMagazinePro.com, your number one source for Bitcoin analysis. So just to summarize, over the past few years, the rise in inflation has massively diminished the purchasing power of not just USD and other fiat currencies, but of Bitcoin as well. And looking at this consumer price index or the CPI data, we can see that since BTC first reached the price we're currently at, just around $60,000, the average costs and goods and services has increased by around 20%. And while this isn't ideal, we can see that there are a number of catalysts that are pointing towards more bullish and favorable conditions going forward. And we also would need to acknowledge that when adjusting for the US M1 supply, Bitcoin is barely above its 2017 peak. And the previous cycle didn't even reach a new all-time high when looking at that US M1 metric. So while inflation is hurting BTC, the increase in liquidity we're currently seeing and that shift in sentiment from central banks and governments is definitely more favorable for BTC going forward. And even though, like we said, this isn't ideal for BTC, compared to pretty much every other asset, you'd have been in a considerably worse position. So BTC has definitely acted as a hedge for this rampant inflation we've seen globally over the past few years. If you liked this video, then please visit BitcoinMagazinePro.com where our analytics help you to cut through the noise to make informed data-driven decisions about Bitcoin. With over 150 live charts, personalized indicator alerts, in-depth crypto industry reports, API access, and more all for a fraction of the standard industry price. And let me know what your thoughts are on potentially inflation impacting BTC as a negative? Or do you think that maybe it's a positive as it's going to lead to more liquidity entering the markets? And it's probably going to lead to more positive conditions for BTC going forward. As I said, let me know. I look forward to reading and replying to them. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.